key news special report. King County Sheriff's detectives in the Major Crimes Unit are still trying to solve a murder mystery. Now, it's not a cold case, even though it happened more than 36 years ago. Thanks for joining us. I'm David Rose. And I'm Aliana Gomez. Q13's Olivia Lavoie spoke with the young victim's family and the Major Crimes detective working to piece together this very bizarre puzzle. <laughs> Nestled in the city of Kirkland is a little neighborhood decorated with nice homes and families who feel safe and peaceful here, Kingsgate. But it's also a town that may be harboring the secrets of a boy's murder. I think somebody knows something. Somebody knows something. Dick Cress's son, Pat, was 13 in the spring of 1983. On the morning of April 30th, he woke up at a friend's house it was the first time he'd slept away from home. When it was time for Pat to go home, his parents asked him to meet them about a mile away at this Safeway grocery store. It was broad daylight when he walked out of his friend's house and vanished. What if, you know, if we had just got the directions to the Sassville home and gone to pick him up there, things would be a lot different. For 18 agonizing days, Pat was missing. Family says police thought he was just a runaway, so loved ones were forced to search on their own. And then there were the rumors. We heard the rumors, yeah, just like everybody else did. Rumors about the boy being murdered, his head bashed in, and his body in water. I don't think that that rumor was investigated. But that all changed after a construction worker found Pat's body. The knock on the door to tell Katie that Pat's body had been found, that probably has to be about the hardest. I can still hear my dad's knees hitting the floor when my mom, when we came home that day, that they had found Pat's body. And every once in a while, I will hear a sound that sounds so much like it. And he's right back there. Submerged in a water-filled ditch, Pat was killed from blows to the head. The boy, his Walkman, and his wallet were hidden for weeks at a construction site underneath thick leaves. For the Cress family, their constant searching came to an end. And I will tell you, there was a time my wife and I were less than 10 feet from his body. And God blessed us that afternoon because I can't imagine what our lives would be if we just stumbled onto his body that afternoon. I, I, just, I just can't think about that. The discovery of Pat's body didn't just confirm his family would now forever live in a fog of grief and anguish. It also meant that some of the grim rumors around the middle school were true, and that pointed to a chilling theory. The children in this quiet, middle-class neighborhood knew about the murder, before anyone else. Back in 1983, I remember hearing about a young boy being murdered essentially in my neighborhood. Decades later, he was working homicide in the same department that handled Pat's case. I made a point of saying, I want that case. Don't give it to somebody else. I was excited because of this rumor of a rumor about Pat's body being known about prior to it being found. Um, and frankly, I thought, oh, this is this is going to be, if not easy, it's going to be doable. Mellis has now had the case for longer than Pat Cress was alive. What once seemed simple has proven to be anything but. I still can't find a single person that, that will say, I heard that rumor very specifically from this very specific person. Witness accounts so jumbled it's hard to tell fact from fiction. Which brings Detective Mellis to another possible piece of this puzzle. While Pat reportedly agreed to walk to Safeway to meet his parents, the two boys he was with that afternoon recall things a little differently. Their memory is that Pat sits down and waits for somebody to come get him. Now, they don't know, or there's no definitive way of knowing who was going to pick him up. Um, but these two young men remember that Pat suddenly announces, there's my ride, I'm going to go, and walks out the door. Mellis says one of the boys reportedly looked out the window as Pat left. This would have been his approximate view of the end of the cul-de-sac. In this photo created by Detective Mellis, you can see the end of a car the boy describes seeing. It's an account he still stands by. He sees Pat go around the far side of the car, 
and then turns away. Doesn't say anything else. The last time Pat was seen alive? Maybe. The fact is, someone knows what happened to him. And his father, now 81 years old, needs answers. And even now, 36 years later, it doesn't get any easier.